Hi. In this video, I am to show you some clinical examinations of ENT. I will start and show you this unit. Then how to examine the ear, the nose and throat. Then I will show you a CT scan and audiometry and how audiometry and tympanometry is being done. So I have some instrument lined up for you. I will show you individually all the instruments and how to use them. So these are the ear speculums. You can see the shape is different and I'll show you how to use them when we actually do the examination. The second very important instrument is this otoscope. The light source which is used to examine the ear, it is only for, used for examination and you can do any procedure with this. Again, I'll show you how to use this properly. Then very uh, third very important instrument in the ear which can be used in the nose also. So in the Jackson probe, we wrap this cotton like this. And now this cotton cannot come out. See, I'm putting it, it doesn't come out very easily. So we can put in the canal and either we can clean the canal, apply some medication through this and all that. The other end has this kind of a circular thing and this is used to pull out the wax and the foreign body from the ear. So one end is to clean the canal and the other end is to pull out the wax and foreign bodies from the ear. These are the three instruments which are very commonly used. Sometimes we can use this L-shaped probe. Can you see this l shape at the end? Now this is also hooked around, this is like a hook, it's hooked around some wax, anything stuck in the ear which is not coming out, so we hook this one and we can pull it out. Now this has a very interesting use, you know a lot of people they put, kids especially put moti, moti has a hole, so if it's moti is stuck inside, you can put this hook in the hole of moti and just pull it out. So these are the, some of the instruments that we use for ear. The most important instrument in the nas nasal examination is this which is called the thudicum nasal speculum. Very, very important. You must be able to identify this. They are coming in different sizes for different size of the nose. Now, how to use this thudicum is very, very important. Now, this thudicum, you see, this is my index finger. So, you place it in the index finger like this. It's going to hang down. Okay. Then, this is my middle finger and this is my ring finger. So, ring finger, the middle finger goes like this and then this becomes spin. So, with these two fingers, you can close and open the prongs. So when you push it, the prongs open, the close, and when you pull it, then the prongs open. Now when you're inserting this inside the nose, because the nasal cavity is very narrow, so this whole thing cannot enter the nasal cavity. So we put the, the uh, prongs together and then we push inside the nose and gradually open it up so that the nasal uh, walls flare up and there's a lot of space to examine and do the procedure. And when we remove, remove this, again you have to do the same thing, you have to push them together and then pull it out so that you know it is out of the nose. So how to use this uh, thudicum is extremely extremely important. Slightly difficult can be used for examination or also doing this surgery. But the easier one is this one. This this another nasal speculum. They come in different shapes. This is called cottles. We have cottles, kilians, and few others. So this is easier. You just hold it from here, and these are the prongs. So you push in the nose, and you push it. When you close this, these prongs open up and the nose flares up. But the problem with this is you have to keep it holding. The moment you leave it, it goes back. So when you're doing the examination, it's okay because examination takes few seconds only. So you push in the nose and you pass it, you hold it like this, pass in the nose, and you know this is how you close and open and use it for a few seconds. But while you are doing the surgery, you cannot keep holding it. A is tiring, B, one hand gets involved in the surgery. So we have a lock here. Usually there is a lock here, which is not here, which is in the OP. So there is a screw kind of thing. So when you open it up, there is a screw. Can you see this opening? So there is a screw. So when you tighten the screw, it keeps it open for a long duration of time. So this will keep the nose open and both your hands are free. And also you will not get tired and you can continue to do the surgery for a long duration of time. The third thing that we have to use is posterior rhinoscopy mirror, which I have shown in the relevant uh, chapters. Then we have this uh, tuning forks. As you know, the tuning forks they come in different uh, frequencies. Now, what you do is you have to hold it from here, and then these prongs you have to strike on the hypothenar. This is called hypothenar, not by this. You have to make it tight and then strike it here, and then it starts vibrating and producing the sound. And then you see you do AC and BC, which I'll show you in a little while. Then we have this nasal packing force. So this is how you hold with the thumb and your ring finger and these two hand fingers are used to control it 
it opens and closes and this can be used to pack the nose and remove the pack from the nose sometimes also used to remove foreign body though not very commonly then we have this lux forcep lux forcep is see l shape one side is straight the other side has tight bent so this is to suggest that this end is to be held in the hand the l shape end and this passes in the oral cavity and you push the tongue below so that your oropharynx and the tonsils are right in front of you you can examine the oropharynx and larynx this lux forcep and then we have very special instrument this is indirect laryngoscopy mirror so this is the handle of the mirror you hold it from here and this is the mirror and at the back of the mirror you see there is a steel case to hold the mirror and you all know that when you pass this mirror in the oral cavity when you do the indirect laryngoscopy this mirror has to be heated because otherwise it will get fogged and you can't see the larynx but you have to ensure that when you heat the mirror this back this steel thing because it's a high conductor of heat gets heated very easily so you have to ensure that this tetanus get heated because this is going to touch the uvula and the palate you're going to push the uvula and the palate with this and if it is too hot then the uvula and the palate gets burned and then going to create a lot of problem and that's why when you are inserting when you heated this and you are inserting the mouth you, and you touch on the back of your hand this one to feel that you know warm to the heat to ensure that it is not too much of heating but very very special instruments are these nasal endoscopes these are the nasal endoscope different i'll show you one more now this is called rigid nasal endoscope inside there is fibroeptic cable so you pass in the nose and this end has the lens so you attach this one to the light source the light source so this is the light will pass i'll show you how to use it and this is the eyepiece through which you see you can see directly through the eyepiece or you can attach a camera here and then the image gets reflected onto the tv screen and you can see that and this as i said is the lens end now this lens if you see this one is straight so this is called zero degree angle zero degree so whatever you see is what is in front of you you can only see the structure in front of you but if you want to see structure on the sides then this lens can be different angle like the one here now look at this one can you see this is not straight this is angle so the lens is here on this side this is 45 degree angle okay so even if you pass it like this you don't see what is in front of you you see what is on the side so we have different angles you have 30 degree you have 45 degree you have 90 degree also 120 degree now compare the two tip of the two this is angle and one is very straight so this is 0 degree this is 0 degree and this is 45 degree so very very useful during examination and also surgery and the last one is this very special fibro optic laryngoscope it's called also can be used for fibro optic bronchoscopy so this end is the fibro optic this is flexible now unlike this one which was rigid see this is the case is made of steel this is rigid this cannot be bent and this is flexible fibro optic flexible laryngoscope you can do the nasal endoscope nasal endoscopy also with this you can see the nasal pharyngoscope you can use the nasal pharyngoscope to examine the nasal pharynx and also larynx and bronchus so this end has the lens as you can see here this is passed to the nasal cavity via the nasal pharynx into the oral pharynx and the larynx so this goes very close to the larynx different part of the larynx and you can see and the other end has a eye piece as you can see this is the eye piece end again like you can see directly through the eye piece or you can fit a camera here and see the image on a screen on a tv screen and this as you can see is the light source this is going to attach to the light source and through this the light is going to pass through this cable and it going to illuminate this end and you will be able to examine i'll show you how to do it now a couple of things here so can you see this end this here you attach the suction this suction goes right till and one of these openings if you see there are three openings here you can make out one is for the light it will illuminate the area and you can see examine through one is for suction this is connected through this so any secretion can be sucked out from here you attach the suction here and pulls right from here and the third one is to pass a probe so can you see this opening can you see this opening through this we have a probe not a probe actually we have a instrument a forcep to pass it goes out of here and you can take biopsy from there and this you see this one now this is a knob that can slip there when you turn can you see when i pull it up and down the tip turns like this so when you pull it down this turn to one side when you take it up it turns to the other side so when you want to see the structure 
so it ensures that you can see the structure 360 degree. Once inside, if you want to see something at the top, so you put it like this, see, it turns upwards, you can see something which is at the top. If you want to see something below, then you turn it down, it turns down, and you can see the things which is at the sub, uh, lower part. And in this situation, you can use this one to, you know, uh, this one where the suction tip is attached so that you can see it out and then the vision is very, very complete. And as I said, you can also take biopsy by passing a forceps through this one. This is the ENT unit, as you call it, and it has all the important things that we need. It has suction, it is a heater. Heater, we have to heat the you know, indirect laryngoscope and posterior laryngoscope mirror and all that. And at the top, there are trays where we keep all the instruments and the uh, otoscope. And as we turn it around, you can see there is a suction which is used to clean the canal, remove foreign body, and even clean the nasal cavities and oral cavities and all that. So this is the headlamp which is placed like this and there is a knob at the back which we can loosen and tighten it. So once you place it, this has to be in the center, the light source, and then comfortably tighten it and then you switch it on, like this, the light comes out. In the past, instead of head mirror, we used to use bull's eye lamp and the head mirror. It was a different kind of thing. But now we have that lamp, this one, where the lamp is here. The advantage is that once it is fitted onto the head, the light can fold straight on the patient's ear or nose or throat, whatever you want to examine. And both your ears, hands are free to do the examination. Let's see how we do the nasal examination of this patient. Now, this is the examination of the ear. When you examine the ear, you have to look pre-oral area, any fistula, sinus, growth, lymph node. Then if you turn the pin up, and if you look at the post oral area for any scar mark, because post previous surgery scar could be there, any lymphadenopathy, change in color, and everything. And then you look at the pinna, general sensation, the color of the pinna, any growth, any collection. And then you start doing the examination of the canal and the tympanic membrane. So, first thing you can use are these kind of ear speculums. So, you can see that there are different kind of ear speculums. This is curved, this is straight. So, what it does is when you put the ear speculum in the canal, like this, then if there are hair cells in the canal, it pushes the hair on the sides and you can see through this. So you pull the canal, then with the other hand, you pull the pinna upwards, backwards and outward and you can see through. But of course, for this you have to use the headlamp and the, you know, other light source so that because inside it is dark. The alternatively, what you can do is, you can use an otoscope. Otoscope, which looks like this, as you can see, now inside, if I turn it on, you can see there is a light here inside. So there is light inside. And this is the lens, magnifying lens. This is turned around. You have to see through this lens. And this is a handle which also encases inside the battery that illuminates this light. And if you see here, there is a knob here. This knob you can attach the pneumatic uh, thing where you put this and you can use a single speculum and things like that. A pneumatic otoscope can be used there. So what you do is, now this is the right ear of the patient. And therefore, I have, this is my right hand. So I have to hold this otoscope in the right hand. This is how you hold it. This is called like a pen. You know, this is how you hold the pen. This is how you hold it. With the other hand, this is my left hand. I pull the pinna upwards, backwards and outward. I insert this inside. And then I see through this eyepiece, which is magnifying eyepiece. And therefore, you can see the canal, the tympanic membrane. And if there is a perforation, through the perforation, you can see the middle ear also. What are the findings? What do you see? How do we diagnose? All this is given in relevant videos. You can check on those videos. So for nasal examination, first thing you do is you pull the nose up. And of course, you have to switch on your headlamp so that the light falls. Okay. And then once you're examining the nose like this, then the first thing we use is thoticum. As I've told you, this is how we use it. So when you're pushing in the nose, you close it, push inside the nose, open it up and examine or even do procedures. The better instrument is we have this speculum, which can be either chelians or portals. So what you do is you put in the nose and then you flare it up. You open it up, you can see and examine the nasal cavity. But the best thing is nasal endoscope, which I'll show you at the end of this video. So to examine the ear, mouth, we ask the patient to open the mouth. See, you can see the tongue on the between on the view. You can't see the soft palate. So this Lux faucet, you pass it like this and you push it down. See? The moment you push it down, you can see the posterior end very, very nicely and you can examine the oropharynx. 
Alternatively, what we do is, as I said, that we use the indirect laryngoscopic mirror to ask the patient to pull down the tongue, hold it like this with the mirror, and this you can do the indirect laryngoscopic mirror. Again, you ask the patient to open the mouth, pull out the tongue with the left hand. You wrap this gauze piece around the tongue and hold it like this. With the right hand, you hold the mirror, you pass it, and then you push the uvula back, and you can see the larynx when you want to examine the laryngoscopy. This is indirect laryngoscopy. So, this is the nasal packing forcep with which you can pack the nose and also do the pack from the nasal cavity. Now, suppose this is a cotton wick which we often use for anesthetizing the nasal cavity. We do procedure, we dip this in xylocaine. Hold it from one end, then you pull the tip of the nose like this, and then you push it inside the nasal cavity, one side and the other one on the other side. For epistaxis nasal picking, of course, nasal packing, of course, this is much bigger, which is smeared in a solution, an antibiotic solution, and then again we pack it in layers. One layer goes inside, then the second layer goes on top of that, third layer goes on top of that, multiple layers. So that there is a lot of pressure inside and the pressure is going to stop the nasal bleeding. So this is the forcep which is used for packing the nasal cavity. Now endoscopic nasal examination is a very special examination that we do nowadays. This is as you understand is the endoscope. I told you that this is why we attach this light source. So we attach it here, the light, the cable and then when you switch it on, you see the light comes from here. So you hold it in the right hand, again you push the tip upwards and this and then this end of the uh, endoscope which is rigid endoscope goes inside the nasal cavity and either you can examine from here on the eyepiece or you can attach the uh, camera here and there is a screen in front of you you can see that this is used for examination as well as surgery uh, face surgery functional endoscopic sinus surgery now when you examine the nasal cavity you have to push in three times they are called three passes First time you put in, you go below the inferior meatus into, into the inferior meatus and examine the inferior meatus till the nasopharynx. You also examine the nasopharynx, the station tube, the adenoids, torus to baris, and fossa rosumula. Then you put it out. Second time you pass it upwards to the nose to see the superior meatus and the superior meatus. That is the second pass. And finally, when you put it out and put it the third time, then it goes into the middle meatus, which is the most important area to see the osteomedial complex. That is, osteomedial complex is the most common thing that gets blocked to cause sinusitis and nasal problems. You look for discharge, you look for bleeding, you look for any abnormality in the anatomy, any obstruction, anything, and that's called diagnostic nasal endoscopy. And it's a very, very important procedure for the nasal examination. So, this is the fiber optic laryngoscope I've shown you. So, from here, when we attach to the light source, you switch it on, you can see the light coming here. So, what you do is you hold this hand, this side, because you have to manipulate all these things to turn this tip up and down and then you make the patient comfortable and it's tie the nasal cavity and then you can insert three these to the nasal cavity now make sure that this pyrotic laryngoscope passes in from the inferior meatus because inferior meatus has the maximum space and it goes unhindered there is nothing that like the middle meatus is osteomedial complex so many things that can cause the obstruction inferior meatus is smooth there is nothing so you pass the inferior meatus it goes to the nasopharynx and then it goes down into the oropharynx and larynx and you can keep watching through this eyepiece or you can even attach as i said the lens here and you can see on the mirror now before you pass this you have to lubricate lubrication has to be applied here because otherwise it's not going to go smoothly inside the nasal cavity so you can examine the nose the nasopharynx oropharynx and especially larynx it is called laryngoscope so it is mainly for laryngoscope and as i said by turning this knob up and down you can turn the tip you see the tip can be guided in whichever direction you want it to go and i told you on this knob we attach the uh, suction tip so that in and this is for the forceps you know so this is how a forcep looks like can you see this one so through, the, through this you can pass it and i can push it here and you look at the other side you come out Can you see it has come out from the other side? So this will go right into the larynx and this can be used to either clean or take biopsy or apply medication. Anything can be done. So this end has three things. There is a, the tip has three things. One is the light lens through which you examine. The second is through which you pass this probe 
to clean, to remove wipes and all that. And the third one, as I said, is for suction. Now, the last point I want to tell you is, as I said, although we pass mainly from the nasal cavity, if the patient, nasal cavity has DNS, if the patient's nose is not sufficiently open, then you can also ask the patient to open the mouth and pass the oral, oral cavity also. Now, as you can see, this can be done in OPD. The patient is sitting down very comfortably and you can do it in the OPD. But if the patient is very sensitive, very cannot tolerate all this, then of course you can take the patient to the minor OT, make the patient lie down, make it more comfortable and then you can do it. In most cases, we don't need any anesthesia, but again, if the patient is too sensitive, you can anesthetize the nose or the oropharynx with a little bit of xylocaine so that the surgery becomes, the procedure becomes that much more easy. So, not only laryngoscopy, this can cross the larynx and go into the, uh, the bronchus and you can do the bronchoscopy also. So, this is fiber optic lens which is flexible because it can turn in any which way that you want. So the next test after examining the ear is a tuning fork test, a very important OPD procedure. You all know the tuning fork, they come in different frequencies, most commonly used is 512. So what we do is we strike the tuning fork with a hypothenar and then to check the AC we place outside the pinna, ear conduction and then turn this pinna and place it here on the master bone which is the bony conduction. In drainage we ask the patient to compare AC and BC. When we do Weber's test, we place the tuning fork on this vertex in the center of the bone so that equal sound, sound goes to both the side and the patient can compare right ear bony conduction to the left ear bony conduction. Now during weapons, although we place on the vertex, it is not necessary. You can place it on the forehead, on the bridge of the nose, also on the teeth. Then when you do the swabex test, what you do is you place on the patient's mastoid and then your own mastoid. So when you place on your mastoid, the moment you stop hearing, you place it on the patient's master. If the patient can still hear, that means the patient's bony conduction is better than you. And you repeat the other way around. And when you do Bing's test, you place it here, only on the bony conduction, and you close the canal with your other hand and open it. Close and open it. This is Bing's test. And then you ask the patient, when you block the canal, does the hearing, this bony conduction, increases or decreases? On closing the canal, if this increases, that means either it is normal or sensory neural hearing loss. But on closing the canal, if there is no change in the loudness of the sound, it could be conducted hearing loss. So this is called binge tuning for a test. Now I'll show you a very important procedure, syringing, to remove wax and foreign bodies from the ear. There are two important ways. One is through suction, negative pressure, you can use it. And second is through syringing, which I'm going to use this thing. Right? Okay, this is the right ear. And this is my right hand. So you know that when we sit in the right ear, the left hand, this is my right left hand, left hand is supposed to pull the pinna upwards, backwards, and outwards. This is what we do. You can see the canal opens up, and on the right ear, I have my instrument. This is a suction tip, which is pulling the negative pressure. So I pass it. I'm always looking at the ear, and this is what we do. So this will suck it out. Now look at the wax. Can you see the wax has come out in the suction? So it just pulls it out. So this is the left ear and I'm doing with this syringe. You can see the kidney tray just below the ear. And the purpose is to collect the water, otherwise the water comes out of the patient's body and soils the clothes. So again I'm pulling, now because this is left ear, I'm pulling the pin upwards, backwards, outwards with the right ear and the left hand is used for syringe. And the direction of the jet has to be posterior superiorly. So this is how we pass and you know that the water has to be same as body temperature which is 37 degree right and this is how everything will come out now once you have done the syringe you have to move the ear dry otherwise it tends to get infected in infection now this is an audiometry being done and as you know that audiometry is being done in the soundproof room you can see the patient is sitting across this uh, glass which is soundproof and on this side the audiologist is doing the audiometry with the machine that you can see. So this is how the audiometry is been done and I'll show you how AC and BC is done. This is audiometry from the different angle yeah, inside the room and you can see there are two probes. The first one which is going in the canal. So this is going to check the air conduction of the left ear as you can see left is written here and this then will check the bony conduction audiometry and we all know that we have to do both air conduction and bone conduction and, and only then we can come at a conclusion.
again it is done in the soundproof room you can see in the background there is a tympanogram and here is my audiologist logist mr santosh he'll be doing the tympanometry so this is how they uh, plug the tympanogram the probe in the canal which is three things as you know one produces the sound of 220 hertz the second one picks up the sound and the third one changes the pressure all this is given in details in the relevant video and this is how a tympanogram is being done so these are some of the instrument that i want to talk about and thank you for watching this video have a very good day